Common Co is part of the Queensland Museum Network. There are three other campuses. There's Brisbane, the main museum, Ipswich, that's the Workshop Railway Museum, and the Museum of Tropical Queensland in Townsville. The heritage is kept alive with workshops. One of them is blacksmithing. So in here is where they do all their magic. So we're really lucky here as Terry who is our blacksmith. He is our, um, do you guys know about comics? Yes, do you guys know about comics? Yes, I'm a horse trainer. So um, Terry actually was his apprentice. Um, so he's worked with him and our partners and he's also watching his character. So he's pretty talented in our Terry. Talking about you, are you easy? Yeah. Are they burning? Good <laughs> 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 work. Yeah. 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 So this is Swipe it from behind yeah. without being seen. So very common yeah. back there. I guess it was considered a little bit safer up next to the driver. Um, they did have rules back then, though, that if the bush ranger came and pulled you over, just give him everything. They were ruthless. Um, they were not very nice. So up there, it's called the drop-off set. Because the trips were quite long, people would fall off um, falling asleep. So their workplace health and safety not as great as today. <laughs> so if you sat up here next to the driver, it actually cost you 25% more. Really? So that was the box seat, the best seat in the house, um, but these got stuck a lot. So if you were sitting in the front, you had to get out and you had to help push. So you were really paying for your money. Mm. So it was really expensive to travel in one of these. So in today's day, it would cost you about $1,000 for a day's worth of travel. So a day's worth of travel back then was about 80 Ks. Um, so yeah, um, it cost the skilled tradesman's average wage for a week to have wow. a $5 one of these for one day. 
just license to carry. So yep. is there a sort of state tax or something? Oh, I don't know the answer to that question. Sorry, that'd be a Jeff question. <laughs> He's not here today, so I can't ask you. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, so they had, again, why Cobb & Co was so popular was 25 to 30 k's. Um, they had changing stations. So what would happen would be the driver would load his Google um, and then he would harness up a new team of horses. So they'd go you know, to the toilet, have a bit of damper or a bit of tea, um, or go to the pub for lunch, and then they would continue on another 25 to 30 k's. So the horses were well rested and they bred their own horses back then. So that's, again, why Cobb & Co was so popular. So Cobb & Co broke in 1924. What? Right. Yes, so railway was coming in, yes, and cars, absolutely. So um, railways were a lot faster, cars were a lot faster, and they also had um, mail delivery in the air. So they were the bus. So this coach here is Coach 112. It was actually one of the last coaches to ever run from run from Copper Co. And it went from Yorba to Surat. So I forgot to mention as well that the coach over there. Coach 100 was that coach that they used to that charity coach run that Bill Bolton organised too. So I think it's an amazing thing considering you know travelling for three months after the company had a little bus. Yeah. So who do you think wrote in these ones? Green. Royalty. Yeah, royalty. Governors. Really, really rich people. They're called the Victoria and the Landers, um, because Victoria, I guess, they still use it a lot today over in Victoria. So Princess Kate and Princess William, um, Prince, Princess Kate and Prince William actually got married to one very similar to this. Um, and this is where we actually get our native glove box and our cars today from. So what would happen is, because they were quite fancy inside, the driver would be wearing gloves on his head because the, the range were quite oily. So when we could get in for anything, um, we would put them in his glove box, um, so not to make it dirty. So that's why we want the glove box today. You, Mr. Nice, probably recognise the suburbs on you. Uh, so this is the omnibus, so these were used in the larger suburbs such as Brisbane and stuff like that to kind of get around with bus. So you could fit 25 passengers on the bus, so again they chucked you in, no women were allowed up the top, why? Glass skirts. Yeah. The dresses and the skirts was the main reason. Um, so women weren't allowed to show their ankles back then at all, um, it was improper and not very ladylike and also Climbing up the ladder, yeah. not very dainty either. So they have been photos though later down the track uh, where they kind of built like a modesty belt around the side <laughs> so women could get on top of you so they could get more money out of yeah. out of people. So so if you want to get off the bus, what actually happened is the driver had a pulley attached to his leg. You pulled on the pulley, pulled on his leg. And again, when we get the expression pulling your leg from, because people would do it as a joke all of the time. So that's how you got off the bus. And here, springs. You can see those ones have springs. So you can see travel in these a lot, but they were mostly used to transport furniture. People didn't sleep with them, but that's what they were mostly used for back then. So all these scratches here along the side are from that fire damage when the boys bought it out. So yeah, that's why they've got the scratches on it. And we had our first ever motor vehicle, so yes. So the, the cars were coming in in the early 1900s. Um, and yeah, you can see where they're getting the design from. They're kind of very similar to the coaches, they've just got the engine that's replaced the horses and the, the steering wheel has replaced the reins. Can you see the old horn that they used to use? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty cool. And over here we have a train of Satan. So this was a traditional family vehicle. So again, we get the expression backseat driver from, so when you're getting up the person for giving the directions in the backseat, that's how they did it back then, because they were actually driving from the back seat. So you'd pull your reins in between your passengers and they'd come over here and you'd be sitting in the back seat driving. So you were actually alive if you were under there. So this is how you got to the hospital back then. So these would go, I don't know if you guys know Oki and Crow's Nest from Toowoomba, so a fair few k's out. They used to travel as far as there with the ambulance litter. Um, and how you actually got pulled along, um, the paramedic would actually be sitting on the back of the coach and be pulling you by hand because it was considered a lot less bumpy and a lot less, you know, they'd stop that. So, um, it would, yeah, so it would have been, I mean, those paramedics would have had to have amazing upper arm strength. Yeah. But, I mean, they'd go ages. So, I mean, it was very minor things, I guess, if you had broken legs or something and, and whatever to go in one of these. Uh, behind us, the sanitary night cart. So, boys, what do, you, what do you think these are? Yeah, they're pretty cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool. 
I love history and I love my visit to the Cobb & Co Coach Museum. It was good fun to look around but there's a whole lot more to see than what I've shown you in this video. So thank you for watching and do yourself a favour and check it out. 
We'll see you on the next video.